Happy Sabbath, Saints. I don't know, but I get excited when I get up here. I like up here. Get some feedback. I'm just going to talk a little bit till the guys sort this out. So, the last time I was up here, we, it was, no, it was the first of the year. I did, I was here the first of the year. So now we are continuing our series on Connect, Grow, Serve, Go as a family. I'm just talking so you guys can get me going before I get into it. And this week, and this month, we are talking about serving. And my title up here is One Serves, Three Saves. I struggled with my title because I didn't know what to put in. I said, God, what is it that you want me to put in this title? Because I can't. I came up with all kind of weird title. And they didn't talk, you know, like three for one special. My wife says, well, that's, that don't make sense. You know, it don't make any sense. So I didn't until last minute. I had to figure it out. But anyway, to God be the glory. I trust him. And it doesn't matter what the title is. I know that the message that he gave me this morning I'm about to birth is from him and not myself. Um, I love when God opens up the word to me and then I go and I refer it back to spirit of prophecy and it's exactly what he said to me that is in coincide with exactly what is in the word. And I love that. So anyway, since we all settled out, that song's good. I feel calm now. I'm good. Please forgive my allergies. I am battling the little green critters on the car. My tissue is here. If anyone needs tissue, please don't feel free to come and ask. I can give you. I understand where you're coming from. All right. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for your many blessings. I count myself unworthy to stand before you. And yet, Father, I delight in doing your pleasure. I ask that you will go before us, go before me, Water the hearts that are here, that they will receive the word as you have given to me, Father. That even if I fall short, Lord, your spirit is grace, is sufficient enough to pick up where I, I drop. That they will leave here better than they entered. Amen. So the text today that we are talking about, one serve, I keep looking up. Woo, guys. Whee. One serve, three saved. And the text today is in your Bible. If you have your Bibles with you, I have the old version. Ooh, boy. I have the old version here so I can connect to my older folks. Amen, senior citizens, senior members. Amen. Amen. I can connect with you guys here. And to my younger generation, I can connect with you right here. So I am bridging both gaps. No one is to be left out. So the text today is 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 7 to 16. And I will read this in your hearing and we're going to go into it. Now this Bible text that I have, this passage is packed with so much stuff in it. I don't think I can unpack all of it, but it is so good. I tell my, my kids, it's packed with vitamin C. You could say Christ, you could say vitamin C, the nutrients. It's packed with it. So it's so much good stuff. Let's get into it. First Kings chapter 17. Turn your pages or you put your palm devices on. I'm going to read from my, uh, from my Bible. It's easier. Those who have it, say amen. Those who don't have it, say I need time. All right, somebody need time. You got it or she got it. A beginning and it came to pass that after a while the brook dried up because there were no rain in the land and the word of the Lord came unto him saying arise get thee to Zarephath which belongs in Sidon and dwell there behold I command the woman the widow woman there to sustain thee so he arose and went to Zarephath 
And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Verse 11. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Verse 12. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a crude. And behold, I gather two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Go and do as thou have said, but make me therefore a little cake first, and bring unto me, and after make thee and thy son. And thus said the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the crude of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent, sent it rain unto the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and said, and she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the crude of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And it came to pass that after these things, sorry, this, let's take a 16. I think I went, yeah, 16, sorry, I was going ahead. So now as I read this passage, I said, God, show me what this text have to say. Now usually I want to use this opportunity to teach as we also preach. When you look at scriptures, do not infer anything into the scripture, but stop for a while and say, God, tell me what the scripture is saying. Sometimes God will answer you immediately. Sometimes he will answer in a week. But you want to ponder upon the scripture. And I said, God, tell me what you want, what the scripture is saying. And I started to go verse by verse. And it came to pass that after a while that the brook dried up. Because there was no rain in the land. There you see an economic situation. No rain. Dried up. It may be a global thing. It may be a personal thing. It may be a city thing. But there was an economical situation going up. There was no rain. Rain equates to harvest, growth, food, supply. There was no rain. I say, okay, God, all right, economic state. Verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, verse 9, and get thee to Zarephath. The text, my, my title is One Save, Three Serve. Oh, one serve, three save. It depends on how you're going, how you look at it. But here you have Elijah. If you look at the backstory of Elijah, Elijah had run away from Jezebel because he had done such a great feat that he now become depressed and now he's felt that he's going to die. So he spent three months in a cave where the angels fed him through ravens. He was there for a point. And here now God is saying to him, get up and go to the woman of Zarephath. To go to Zarephath. Here you, we see here in verse 9, get thee, which is you are being sent. Question is, when people come to you for help, God send them. God told Elijah, get up, go to Zarephath. Now I asked God, I said, God, what is Zarephath means? I looked up this thing. This thing is amazing. Has anybody understand what Zarephath means? Zarephath, according to my research, I'm getting my smart device. Zarephath means a place of refinement, smoldering place, a place of purification, a place where they get iron and do stuff. So Zarephath, 
those, your spiritual points, sometimes we as Christians will get low in our spiritual plight or flight. And God will say to you, get up and go to Zarephath, because there's a reason why. And this connects with the woman. Why did he send him to that? Because of the experience Elijah had before, he had to be renewed. So God is sending him to someone to help him. Those who come to you, God sent them. And if you turn them away, you can cause that person to lose salvation or they're at the point whereby they are desperate and they could do things that will cause them to say, I'm done. Many times, folks in the church turn away not because of doctrine, it's because the way they were treated. That's why, that's nothing. We have the word, we have it, we have it. But the way we treat someone causes them to now turn away. And here Elijah now, a great prophet, he is, he is a man on high. He did this miraculous miracle before it. And now he is depressed. Does Christian get depressed? Yes. We get depressed. Personally, in my life, there are things when I get low. I get low, real low. I said, and sometimes you question. You say, God, is this for me? There were times I was studying. And one of the, the, the devotions I was having with my children, my family, saying that the stuff that you're going through in your life, we looked at God, and I, and I talked to pastor about it. And the, the, the lesson said that <clears throat> sometimes we turn to God because we want to get things. And we use God temporarily or fear where we come to him when things, are, we, when things are, are bad, we come to him, but when things are good, we disregard him. Or you, you can't use God that way. Or if you are going through a crucible in your life, God is working out something in you. So which one it is? So you got to ask the Holy Spirit to tell you. So I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, God, what is it? Is it going on in my life? And he says, I'm working through you. It's not that I did something wrong. It's working through me. And it's not fun. So here Elijah now is going. And he is going to a place. Now that's the spiritual part. We have a pantry here, food pantry. God bless that. We have a ministry here. We have ministry. But when folks come in here, they are coming here because God sent them. And how you, reach, like I said before, how they are treated will dictate whether or not they are going to stay or they are going to leave. Pastor asked last week, if this church was not here, would we be missed? To this today, we will be missed. In your own personal life, take it away from the church. Your little corner, your little world that you are in, where you work, go to school. If you are not in class, if you're not at work, are they going to miss you? You were sent to your job place not to get a salary. Salary is just a token of what you have. I know we need it to sustain it, but God is the one who sustains you. You are there to serve someone. So I say, okay, God, I got that one. Point one. And arise and go to Zarephath. And we know that Zarephath was a refine. The flip side of it is Elijah needed to be renewed. So God wanted to use Elijah now to see what is going to happen in your life because we need that. And unfortunately, we as Christians, we like things when we're up. We, all of us love things when we are high. It is the best thing ever. I love it when things are going good, but when it's not, I don't know about it. So God is sending Elijah there. Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongs in Sidon, uh, and dwell there, I command a widow woman there to sustain thee. God told Elijah that the woman will have what you need. The people who come into your life, come into your life because you have what they need. So supply. And it says that I will maintain thee, to keep thee, sustain. And look at the word sustain, to maintain, to keep, to provide. Verse 10. So he arrived, ar arose, obedience. It's important. Obedience. One of the biggest things that God requires of his children is obedience. 
If we don't obey, we miss on the blessing. We miss out what God has for us when we don't obey. We lose a lot when we don't obey. I will give a personal experience. God says, says Elder Hercules, says Hercules, says Kern. He called me my first name. He says, Kern, take out your tithe and offering and put it aside. I said, okay, God, I could transfer it and I will then pay with this. Take it out. I said, okay, God, I got time. I disobeyed. I'm telling you my own life. I disobeyed. My account was overdraft, overdrawn. I had to pay a fee, plus I lost the money that was in there because I didn't obey. So I said, God, I am sorry. God now, in his mercy, replenished that and more. Obedience is important. My aunt used to say, obedience is heaven's first law. Got to obey. But God says, get up, get up, get up, do this. You don't question God. It don't make sense. God will tell you, stop. It don't make sense. Put the fleece right here and wet it and let a wrong be. Let, yeah, he asks a question. Let it dry. And it doesn't make sense. He will use the simple stuff to confound the wise. Obedience was important. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate city, behold, there was a woman there gathering sticks. And he called to her, and he says, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Where does that song like? Does anybody know where that song's like? In another story? Woman at the well. Woman at the well. I say, God, this is similar. Elijah is asking, or God is taking from what Jesus is taking from the experience of Elijah to do the woman at the well. He's telling her, get me stuff. So here we realize that this is a test. So the woman fetched me and I prayed thee a little water uh, vessel that I made. And as the woman was going to fetch it, she was obedient. She was not of a Jewish faith. She was a Phoenician. She was not of the Jewish faith. But she knew God. Excuse me. She knew God. So she fetched, and she, as she was going to fetch, now Elijah gave you the test. Bring me the test question. I pray thee a morsel of bread in thy hand. And it's like, the woman has three sticks in her hand. How are you going to ask her for bread? They got no bread in her hand. Three sticks. But Elijah was asking her question because he wanted her to realize where her faith was. She said, and she turned around in honesty. I says, I don't have any. The woman at the well, I don't have a husband. And the one, and Jesus says, you answered correctly. Same thing with the woman here. She says, I don't. I pray thee that the morsel of I mean, bring me the most, and I pray thee a morsel of bread in thy hand. Similar to what Jesus asked. And she says, as the Lord thy God liveth thee, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a crude. In this text, when people come to you, they are going to inconvenience you. I say, what? They will inconvenience you. When people come to you for help, it is going to be a point of inconvenience. I don't have enough, but you're asking me. They're going to ask you based upon, they're going to inconvenience you based upon your time, your resources, your supply, and your energy. I need this. And what I gather from this text also is the fact that to serve others is not absence of sacrifice. You have to sacrifice if you're going to serve somebody. If I have abundance and I have it, that's not serving. You can take whatever you want. But to serve someone requires sacrifice. It may be your resources, it may be your time, it will inconvenience you. This is where the woman has. She has little or nothing. And here she's going to have, I have enough. She's saying, I have enough. She's giving him an inventory. I, all I have is enough to feed me and my son. And after we eat that, we're going to die. 
Because the drought was last, the drought was three years and six months. That's how long the drought was. Folks are going to come to you and say, I need $5. And it's the last $5 in your wallet. And you know you have to buy gas. What are you going to do? Are you going to give it? Or are you going to say, I got to buy gas. See you later. She said, you look at the text, she obeyed. Sacrifice to serve requires sacrifice and it will inconvenience you. And as, I, and as the Lord liveth, she says, I have no, uh, not cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel, um, a meal in the barrel and a little oil and two sticks that I may, be, that I may go in and dress it for my son that we may eat and, and die. So I looked at the passage again. I said, okay, God, what is this text telling me in verse 12 now? The meal is what you put into it and there's oil. And I said, God, what does oil represent in the Bible? What does the meal? When we prepare a meal, we put stuff into it. And whatever you put into it makes a difference. You can have a simple meal or you can have a lavish meal. So whatever you put into it, you're going to get out. It is the same as you invest in people. If I prepare for someone and I give them a feast, I'm putting into them. I'm investing into it. And here you see as the text goes on, Elijah told her. I want to turn my page, sorry. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but, that but, that conjunction, that but, but make me first. When you put others first, God puts you first too. He puts you first. And bring it unto me and I have to make this. And here... And she went and did according to what Elijah said. And her household did. And no, sorry. And Elijah says, fear not. And go and do as thou saying. And thy a little, little cake at first. And bring it to me. And as, as for thus say the Lord thy God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the crude of oil fail. Until the day which the Lord sent it rain. What you invest in individuals will not fail you. What you put in people is not going to waste. There are folks who will tell you, what is the purpose of putting this? This person keeps always asking. This person will never get better. This, people, this person is this. They're using you. And you're saying, God says it. It is not your business to regulate who you give. If God says give, you say, yes, Lord, and you give. Not for you to say, I'm going to distribute according to God. When you do that, you place yourself in the position of God and now you have now become tainted and your sacrifice is not a sacrifice, but you now delegate it because you see what is right. The oil, which is important. I looked up the, the meaning of the oil. In Psalms 1, that's a little bit loud. In Psalms 133 verses 1 to, 12, 1 to 2 says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is that when brothers dwell in unity, and it's like a precious oil on the head that runs down the beard of Aaron, the beard of Aaron, running down from the collar to his robe. That oil represents meal, yes. We use food, use the bread and oil as the Italian would do it. But also there's a spiritual aspect of the oil. When you put that oil in, it will not fail you. That causes that person to become anointed. Because of what you have done, because you have the oil of Christ on you, and you touch that person, you are now showing them, I am now consecrating you for mission. You realize that folks come into the church because of what you did. That is the oil that has not failed you. That's the oil. And 
And as she went and did according to the what's saying of Elijah, and she and he did eat for many, many days. And the barrel of meal waste not, neither did the crude of oil fail, according to the Lord, what the Lord had said. So the question I asked today, the businesses, many businesses thrive on good customer service. Could you look me on a little bit down, please? It can make or break a company, good customer service. It can make or break a business. People are not worrying about what product you have in a business. It is the way how the customer is treated will either cause them to come back or not. You cannot have a perfect business. You're going to have customers who are going to tell you that I don't like your business. I'm going to go somewhere. And there are others who are going to do that. I work for a Fort, uh, five, uh, Fortune 500 company. And in one day, I got chewed out and told to go look for another job in some place. And then on the same day, I got to say, look, you're in the best place. And I'm glad that you are here because they need you in this business. The way you treat others would either dictate whether they stay or leave. In this story that God allows us to record, that recorded for us, says here that because of the woman's obedience, Elijah was saved and renewed. As you read the story later on, he did a miracle for her. She was saved. Her son was saved and they had enough to last until the rain came. Question I'm asking you today. Who in your life are you serving? Who has come into your life who have come and knocked upon your door and asked? Are you serving? Because when we serve individual, we are saving ourselves also. A story was told. One night a cobbler dreamed that the next day Jesus was coming to visit him. The dream seemed so real that he got up very early the next morning and hurried to the woods and where he gathered green brows to decorate bushes of uh, reeds to decorate his store for the arrival of such a great guest. He waited all morning, but in disappointment, the shop remained quiet, except for an old man who limped up to the, the door and ask him in for a few minutes to warm himself. While the old, while the man was resting, the cobbler noticed that the, the fellow, the old fellow's shoes was worn through. Touched, the cobbler took the new pair from his shelves and saw that it was that the, that there was a stranger would, was wearing them as he went his way. Throughout the evening, the afternoon, the cobbler waited. But his only visitor was an elderly woman. He had seen her struggling under the heavy load of firewood. And he invited her and two into his shop to eat. He saw that, sh that she had nourish nourishing food before she went on her way. And that night, sorry, on her way. As that night began to fall, the cobbler heard a little child outside of the door. The child was lost and afraid. The cobbler went out, soothed the youngster's tears, and, and with a little and little hand in his hand, took the child home. To, took the child home to his home. As he returned, the cobbler was sad. He was convinced that while he was being away, that he had missed the visiting of the Lord. In his anguish, the cobbler cried, Why is it that, why is it, Lord, that your feet delays? You have forgotten that this was the day. Then a soft, in the silence, a voice he heard. 
lift up your heart, for I have kept my word. Three times I came to your friendly door. Three times my shadow was on your floor. I was the man with the bruised feet. I was the woman you gave food to. I was the child on the street. Matthew 25 verses 40 says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done unto me. One serve, three save. At this time we'll have the praise team come up.
Zarephath had shared her morsel with Elijah. And in return, her life and that of her son was preserved. And all who in times of trial and want give sympathy and assistance to others more needy, God has promised great blessings. He has not changed. His power is no less now than the days of Elijah. Let us pray. Father in heaven, for some of us, we may be needing to send to Zarephath. For some of us, Father, we are to serve, but you called us in, in any situation to serve. Help us in no wise or any ways, Father, to turn away those who come to us for help. Whatever little we have, Father, you are able to multiply it. You have shown it throughout the Bible. The kid, Father, with the five loaves and two fishes, Father, he did mighty. He did multiple stuff, Father. It was so much that 12 baskets were collected after the multitude was fed. Father, you illustrated here in the story in 1 Kings 17, verse 7 to 16, where the woman of Zarephath, nameless as she is, <clears throat> humbled your call, your, your calling to sustain one of your people. And we as this church, Father, have, call, have answered that call even now to help those around us, Father. Whatever little we have, Father, we will give it not to them, but we are giving it to you because as much as we have done least to our brother, we are doing unto you, Father. So we thank you for this word, Father, for this admonition, Father, for this correction in our lives. Selfishness does not have a place in your kingdom, Father, but love and mercy. Meet the needs of your people now, Lord, whether we are, we are going to Zarephath, or whether we are the widow or widowers of Zarephath, continue to supply all our needs until you send that latter rain. Until you come to take us home where there shall be no more tears, no more pain, no more sh shortcomings, no more lack, Father. Until that time, we will continue to bless your name and call and be called your children by our actions. In your name we pray. Amen.